I'm Pastor David Becker, Pastor St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks also to KKI and Radio for broadcasting this service. It's also available online at stjohnaitkin.org. That's stjohnaitkin.org. At the present time, we are holding in-person services at 9 a.m. Uh, we also are having in-person Christmas Eve service at 5 o'clock and Christmas Day service at 9 a.m. On this, the fourth Sunday in Advent, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We now confess our sins. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy. And for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro it comes from 1 Samuel chapter 2. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like you, the Lord. There is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He makes low and he exalts. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson comes from the Old Testament book of Micah, chapter 5, and I'll begin the second verse. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be the ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor is given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now, he, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. When the Assyrian comes into our land and treads in our palaces, then we will raise up against him seven shepherds and eight princes of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now is the time when uh, perhaps we're getting a few uh, Christmas cards. Uh, some cards uh, have a, a, perhaps a beautiful picture of the town of Bethlehem on it. Um, and uh, usually there's a star up in the sky over Bethlehem. Uh, Bethlehem, it uh, 
we hear about in our Old Testament lesson for today was that little town. Uh, that's why we sing that song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. It wasn't very important. It wasn't as important as Jerusalem. But what is God promising here in, in our Old Testament lesson here? God is promising that from Bethlehem will come a ruler over Israel. And we know who that ruler is. It's the one whose birth we'll celebrate later this week. It's Jesus Christ, our Savior. It says he will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of his Lord. And yes, certainly we know that the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want. And we know that Jesus is the good shepherd who not only was born in Bethlehem for us, but he died for us on the cross. He gave his life for us and for our sin. Amen. Our epistle lesson comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and I'll begin the fifth verse. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law, then he had that, behold, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second, and by that we have been sacrificed through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Be to God. Our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 1, and I'll begin at the 39th verse. In those days Jesus arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leapt, leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken of her from the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We now confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church. Thank you for tuning in. Our text on this, the fourth Sunday in Advent, comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 5 to 10 of which I just want to read the opening words. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you've not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. Here ends the reading of our text. It's hard to believe that Christmas will be here in the end of this week. Ready or not, here it comes. Plans and preparations for Christmas have been being made for a while now. Retailers have been planning and preparing for months as they encouraged us to shop early. Some of us don't need encouragement. We not only have shopped early, but we've been making other kinds of preparations for Christmas, putting up Christmas decorations, getting the Christmas cards ready, um, and uh, either getting ready for family to come and visit us or us getting ready to go and visit family. The Advent season is all about preparing. 
Our Advent preparations, though, are not just about preparing our homes for our celebration of the Lord's coming. Our Advent preparations are really about preparing our hearts for His coming. This Advent season, we've been called to repent of our sin, to rejoice because of the forgiveness of sins that's ours. These kinds of spiritual preparations are more important than any other Christmas preparations we might make. Of course, all our Advent and Christmas preparations are a result of God's plans and preparations for Christmas. When the Christmas trees grow up and Christmas music is played in October, when places where we shop, we may shake our heads a little bit and say, too early for them to be doing that. But let me tell you, God's preparation for Christmas was a lot longer than that. He began planning and preparing for Christmas from the moment Adam and Eve fell into sin. All his plans and preparations are spelled out for us in the Old Testament. Some of those plans and preparations are referred to in our text, where we hear about sacrifices and offerings that were made in the Old Testament. The only thing is, our text quotes an Old Testament passage that says, Sacrifices and offerings you not desired, but a body you prepared for me, and burnt offerings and sin offerings you've taken no pleasure. The point is, all those sacrifices and offerings that were made in the Old Testament were part of God's planning and preparations for Christmas. Sacrifices and offerings were really not what God desired or took pleasure in. But they were still important, just as our planning and preparations are important. But they are not as important as what they were pointing to, namely God offering up his own son as the sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Imagine, for example, if a well-prepared meal is eaten or a beautifully wrapped gift goes, I should say, if a well-prepared meal is not eaten, or a beautifully wrapped gift goes unopened. Or if you travel to see your family but never get out of the car. That is what the Old Testament is without the new. For all those years, in a variety of ways, we hear in the Old Testament how God was planning and preparing for Christmas. He was preparing for the coming of his very own son. Mary understood that. Um, in the Magnificat, Mary speaks about how God's mercy is for all those who fear him from generation to generation. She also remembered how God had shown strength with his arm, how he had scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts, how God had brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he sent away empty. Mary's words are a good summary of God's plans and preparation for Christmas as spoken in the Old Testament. At just the right time, when all the planning and preparations were complete, the day to which all the planning and preparations that we hear about in the Old Testament had come, in Bethlehem, as the prophet Micah had said in our Old Testament lesson for today, a child was born and a son was given. That was not the end of the story. Now the son had to do some preparing too. The son had to increase in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. The son had to perfectly obey the father throughout his life. And then, then he gave up his life on a cross. In that way he made peace between God and man by giving us the forgiveness of sins and making eternal life possible for us by not only dying but also rising to life again. Before his ascension to heaven, Jesus says that he's going to go there to prepare a place for us. Now it is the Holy Spirit who is at work making preparations in our hearts as he comes to us through word and sacraments. The Holy Spirit points us to those Christmas gifts that are not purchased with gold or silver or Visa or MasterCards. The Holy Spirit points us to the gifts that were purchased by the blood of the innocent suffering and death of God's own Son. Those gifts are the gift of forgiveness, the gift of life, and the gift of salvation. And the Spirit wraps those gifts in water, in word, 
and bread and wine and gives them to us. He wants us to be prepared. He wants us to have faith so that we can receive those gifts. And once we have faith, once we have God's Christmas gifts, there's one more thing the Holy Spirit wants to prepare us for. Listen to these words in the book of Ephesians. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in, in them. The point is, the good that God has done for us, he wants us to do for others. It is the thing we all have to learn about Christmas. The joy of Christmas is not about getting gifts. The joy of Christmas is giving gifts. So as we have received, so now we give. It's all a part of God's Christmas plans and preparations. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. O oh Lord, mighty God, there is none like you in holiness, constancy, and might. Yet you exercise your power for the salvation of sinners. As we draw near to the celebration of Jesus' birth, fill our hearts with gratitude that your Son humbled himself and became flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. O oh Lord, mighty God, Bethlehem was too small to be among the clans of Judah, yet from it came forth the King of Kings. Remember the congregations of your people where numbers are small and resources are scarce. Provide for their needs and remind them that the Lord of Lords dwells among them in his means of grace. O oh Lord, mighty God, you make poor and you make rich. Receive our thanks for your gifts of daily bread. Give us contentment with what you provide. Preserve us from coveting what you do not give and grant that we would be wise stewards of your blessing. O Lord, mighty God, you sent your Son to shepherd his flock and strengthen to be great to the ends of the earth. Grant wisdom to our leaders and peace among the nations that we may dwell secure. O Lord, mighty God, you helped your servant Israel and your mercy endures forever. Look upon those brought low by illness, injury, grief, and other affliction, especially those that we now name in our hearts. Have mercy upon them, grant them healing and strength, and maintain in them the certain hope of your faithfulness to them, for Jesus' sake. O oh Lord God, you sanctified us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ once and for all on the cross. We pray, Lord, that you continue to prepare our hearts as we believe your promises. O oh Lord, mighty God, you've done great things for us, most of all, delivering us from death to life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mercifully hear our prayers and answer them according to your will for the sake of your Son, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church. Thank you for tuning in. I pray that you have a blessed week and a blessed Christmas. Amen.